Well, it's good to have some of our vacationers back. I think we still got some more vacationers that are out and about, but hallelujah, I think we got one of the vacationist churches I ever seen in my life. <laughs> but that's okay. You're able to enjoy yourself in this old sin sick world. So thank the Lord for that. It's always a pleasure to have my good friend, Brother Aaron Adams, with us. He preached two of the greatest messages Sunday, evangelistic messages that you'll ever hear. And uh, Brother Aaron, I want you to come and let's see what God's got for us one more time, all right? Yeah, Love you, brother. Yes, appreciate sir. you. Amen. It's so good to see everybody here tonight in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. I appreciate you being here, and uh, thankful for the presence of the Lord that I feel here. Before we go to his word, could we just lift our hands and let him know our need of him, Lord? We need you, Jesus. Lord, we need you. We thank you that you're in this place, Lord. We want you to know, Lord, that we are people in need of you. Lord, we're in need of you. We're in need of a touch from you. We're in need of a word from you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that I can come to your house to worship and to praise you. Lord, I thank you that I can bring my needs to you. Lord, my petitions to you. Lord, that you're not afraid of my need. Lord, you're drawn to need. Lord, I thank you tonight. Lord Jesus, that I can call on your name. Jesus, I thank you. That's it. Go ahead and open your mouth and talk to him. Just talk to the Lord for a moment. We're going to go to his word in just a minute, but just talk to him. Let your heart. Communicate with him. Commune with him. Jesus, I need you, Lord. More than anything in this world, I need you. Jesus, more than anything in this world, Lord, I need you. I need you in my life, Lord. I need you to help, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I worship you. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. It's good to be in his house and feel his presence here. Amen. He is a God that is drawn to need. Amen. He's not um, looking for perfect people. He's looking for people that have need. That ought to give us comfort tonight to know that he's looking for people that have need because I, I know how we are. Every one of us have needs. We can try to act like we don't, but every one of us have needs. And those are the things that Jesus is drawn to. He said, I, the physician, those that don't need the physician, they're not interested in him. It's those that are sick. It's those that have need that are looking to the physician. And tonight, I look to the physician tonight because I have need. He said, I'm just going to go where people need me, where they want me. I don't want him to pass by me because I want to act like I don't have any needs. I want him to know I want you to come here. I need you to come here. I don't have it all together. I got problems. I got needs. I got situations. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Psalms chapter 37, and Bishop was quoting this verse um, several times a few moments ago. Let's go to Psalms chapter 37 and verse 23 Psalms chapter 37 and verse 23 the steps of a good man the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way verse 24 goes on to say though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand verse 23 back to 23 the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and I want to teach preach a few minutes tonight from this thought, ordered steps, ordered steps, ordered steps. The Lord is ordering our steps. And um, I, this may not be anything deep or new for you tonight, but I just want to talk to you about ordered steps. Lift your hands one more time before you're seated. Let's thank him for his word, ask him to speak to us today. Lord, I thank you for your word. I pray that you speak to us today. Anoint us to receive your anointed word. Lord, help us to be sensitive to your spirit, to what you want to do in this place. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you have your way. Speak to every person, Lord, through your word as only you can, Lord. We thank you tonight for this word. We thank you for it. Speak to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Tonight, when we refer to steps, I've 
this scripture is obviously talking about the steps, the direction of a man. Um, but just, well, uh, let me start off with a quick, short little story. Uh, it's probably been a year or two ago now. I needed a, uh, just a, you know, cheap dresser. Um, it had about, I don't know, six or eight drawers on it, you know, needed, needed one. I did, didn't need anything real nice. And, you know, all the furniture stores in town, you went to buy one and, it was way more money than I wanted to spend on a piece of furniture that I just wasn't a, anything for decoration or to look nice. It was just functional, and they were asking a lot. And so I found on Amazon, I found that I could order one on Amazon. I thought, man, you order furniture on Amazon. That's a pretty good deal. So I ordered this dresser. It's probably, I don't know, three or four foot wide and about six or eight drawers that come out on it and uh it's probably about this this high or so and it's pretty big so i went ahead and ordered it <coughs> and when they delivered it uh that box that it came in was probably about this thick <laughs> i thought hmm <laughs> i think they forgot a box <laughs> and then i found out why the furniture companies around town were charging more <laughs> Because I opened the box, and every piece was in that box that was, I mean, just, you know, very small, jammed in there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And then this book falls out with the steps to put it together. You know, I got to think, you know what, paying an extra $100 or $200 wouldn't have been so bad, I guess. So. <laughs> and so here I am, and I, I just, man, you know, I'm, I'm not a real, I'm not a builder. Or I, even stuff like that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. And, but anyway, I, I just said, you know what, if I'll just kind of follow the direction, if I'll follow the steps, I've done it with other things, it'll, it'll probably work. And, and sure enough, I, I did. But what I found out was sometimes the steps had me doing stuff that really seemed crazy. Like they have you start out making it upside down. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And, and so I'm doing steps and all of this, and it looks crazy. But by the time I get done, it's what it should be. And oftentimes what we want is we want the picture on the box to happen. Without the steps. But the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And I want to be everything that God's called me to be the immediate moment that he calls me. But the psalmist said the steps, that it's going to be a process, that living for God is a process, that my relationship with him is a process. I, I want to go the instant he calls me. I want to immediately be what he's calling me to be. But I've got to understand and realize that there are steps to the process to get from where he's calling me from to where he wants me to be. Could he make it happen in a moment? He absolutely could. But that's not how he does it. He does it through steps. And the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And I've come tonight to talk to somebody. You're in the middle of some steps right now that don't make any sense and they seem like they don't add up. You just keep walking with him. You keep hearing him. You keep hearing the voice of the Lord. You keep obeying him. And I promise you the day is going to come where you're going to look back and say, now I see where the steps were ordered of the Lord. I didn't like it. It didn't make sense. But the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. That your steps, if you're trying to live for God tonight, if you're following him, your steps are ordered even when it doesn't feel like it. Your steps are ordered even when you've had a bad day. Your steps are ordered even and when it hasn't gone your way in a while, your steps are still ordered. I still trust that my steps are ordered when things haven't worked out the way I thought they ought to work out. That I have ordered steps. That God is directing the steps of my life. That God is sending things to change me and to transform me and to make me into what he wants me to be. That my steps are ordered. Does anybody believe that here tonight? That your steps are ordered. Your steps are ordered, and it's a process. God uses process to bring us into what he wants us to be. There, just quickly here tonight, I want to look, um, Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 2. Verse 1, God speaks to Abraham, tells him to get out from the country and from thy kindred, 
from my father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2 is what I want us to look at. And I will make, I will make of thee, I will make of thee a great nation. I'm going to make it. When I think about making, I think of my mom making a cake when I was a kid because I was ready for the finished product. But there was making that had to happen. And God tells Abraham, you're going to be a great nation, but I'm going to make you into a great nation. I'm going to make it happen. It's going to take process. It's going to take time. And this is how it is for every one of us. It takes time and it takes process and it takes trials and ups and downs and the good. Because you know the story of Abraham. You, you, re, you read very long. You see there's ups and there's downs and there's all kind of things that he goes through. But all of it is God making him into what he's calling him to be. He's 75 years old and he says, I'm going to make of you a great nation. You're going to have to trust me that I am going to make it happen. That I'm going to direct you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you. I am going to make of you a great nation. Friend. I want God to make me what he wants me to be. I want God to make me what he has called me to be. I know it's going to be a process. I know there's ups and downs. I know there's good days and bad days, good years and bad years. But God is going to make me into what he wants me to be. We've got to yield ourselves to the potter, friend. We're just the clay on the wheel. And we've got to say, Lord, make me into what you want me to be. Whatever steps I've got to go through, whatever has to happen, I want to go through it because I want to become what you're calling me to be. Because I will make of thee a great nation. I'm going to take you. I'm going to transform you, Abraham, from one small little family, a husband and wife that doesn't even have a child. And I am going to make of thee a great nation. Well, that's quite a promise right there. And it's quite a process to go with the promise. Because he's 75 years old when he gets called, but God says this, but it's, he's 99 when the first boy is born, Isaac. God is making him into what he wants him to be. Can I, <clears throat> let me, I just feel at home here tonight, so I'll just tell you what I, how I feel and think about things. I, I, like, I like for great things to happen. Um. Maybe you hear the audible voice of the Lord every day when you get up. <laughs> Maybe he wakes you up every morning. Get up. <laughs> Something like that. Angels sing as you're brushing your teeth. <laughs> All of that kind of stuff. Maybe that's how it happens for you, but it doesn't really happen for me that way. And um, just because we don't, physically see God working or we don't audibly hear God's voice does not mean that God is not working in our life. What you will see in Scripture oftentimes is God works behind the scenes. But another, another way, uh, more, I don't know, theological way of saying it might be divine providence that, um, to me, the story that uh, exemplifies it to the I don't know, the most in the Old Testament would be the story of Joseph. If you, if you pay attention to the story of Joseph, Joseph has the dreams. The Lord gives him the interpretation of the dream or just reveals to him what the dream is. But you never see God speaking directly to Joseph. There's, there's never a clear direction to Joseph on his life and what's going to happen. But when you look back over his life, you see the steps all along the way. You see the steps of him getting the dream. You see the steps of his father giving him the coat. You see the steps of him getting thrown into the pit. You see the steps of him going to Potiphar's house. But you never see him and God just walking hand in hand, just talking about what's going on in his life. But yet you see God's hand in every step of his life. And I said all that to say, don't get discouraged tonight if it's been a while since you've heard a direct word or 
You've seen something just spectacular and miraculous happen in your life. That doesn't mean that you've stepped outside of the will of God. There's often times where God is silent when we're in certain steps of our life, where we're going through things and we're walking through things and we're going through certain steps of our life. That doesn't mean that God's forgotten about you and that God's given up on you. It just means I'm in the step that God's got me in right now, and when he's ready for me to move to the next step, I trust that he's going to move me to the next step. What really messes people up is when we get frustrated with God's steps for our life and we start are trying to make the steps happen for ourselves, And that's where, friend, we can really get messed up. But as long as I say, I trust that he is directing my steps, that he is the one that is guiding me, that he's the one that's got me here right now. He's the one that's got me in the middle of what I'm going through right now. And if he's got me into this, he's going to get me out of this. That if he got me into this step, there's another step that's coming next. I, I haven't reached the full measure yet, as Bishop was talking about a moment ago in Ephesians. I hadn't reached the full measure yet but I'm trusting that God is walking beside me, that God is working with me, that God is ordering my steps, that he is, and I've come tonight to talk to somebody. Maybe it's been a little while since you felt like anything's changed or anything's happened. Just keep holding on to him. Keep trusting him. Your steps are ordered. Your steps are directed by him. God is the one ordering the next step to happen. Just wait. Just wait on the next, on the next step, because it, it doesn't appear to me in the story of Joseph that there's a lot of dialogue that is recorded between Joseph and God, or God speaking directly to Joseph. But when his brothers show up, and then they come and they're afraid that he's going to kill them, he says, "God sent me before you." to preserve you. He said, man, look at that. Brother Alec, is that you, Brother Alec, up there? Look at him. That man is on it tonight. He said, and God sent me. Didn't feel like it when I was in the pit. Didn't feel like it when I was getting lied on. Didn't feel like it when I was in prison. Didn't feel like it when they forgot about me in prison. But the whole time, God was sending me. God sent me before you. God directed my steps. God ordered my steps to put me right here. And I've come tonight to tell you, it's not always going to feel like God sent you where he sent you when you're going through the stuff to get there. It's not always going to. Well, glory, you can go through some things that don't feel like it's all right. You can go through some problems and some situations that, that feel like, man, where in the world is God? But if you'll keep walking with him, if you'll keep trusting him, if you'll keep saying, I'm just going to hold on to his word, I'm going to keep living the way I know I'm supposed to live, I'm going to keep following after him, there's going to come a moment where you look back and you say, God sent me here. God directed my steps to this place. God ordained me to be at this place. God sent me to this place. That's what Joseph says. He says, God sent me before you. So <clears throat> Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. He tells them all of that. He says, God sent me. And so then they go back to get Jacob. They go back to get that. So, so this is all still in the same story. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the story of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. We're kind of kind of building on that story. Everybody kind of with me? I know I'm kind of a scattered Sunday school teacher, <laughs> but maybe you can just hang with me for a couple of minutes. <laughs> we'll have cookies and juice here in a minute. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so they go back, Joseph's brothers go back to get Jacob, and they tell Jacob, hey, uh, you know, I know we told you Joseph was dead, but surprise, <laughs> He's in Egypt, and he's running the place. And, and this really, you know, affects Jacob. And, and um, the Lord speaks to Jacob calling, and calls him Israel here in verse 2 of chapter 46. God speaks to him in the vision of the night. <clears throat> verse 3, he says, I am God, the God of your fathers. Fear not to go down into Egypt. Look at what he says again. For I will there make of thee a great nation. We're still in the process. We're still in the steps of Abraham. That promise that God gave Abraham, Abraham it's still coming to pass. And now he's talking to Jacob about it. And he's saying, don't be afraid to go down into Egypt, for there I will make of thee a great nation. This is the next step. You've got to obey me, Jacob. Go on into Egypt. Go on, because it's there that I'm going to make of thee a great nation. It's the next step. Don't be afraid to take the next step. 
don't, don't be afraid to take the next step. He says, don't be afraid, for I will go with thee, and there I'm going to make of thee a great nation. Verse number 4, I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. This is the next step. I'm going to bring you down into Egypt, but here's the promise. I'm going to bring you down into Egypt, but here's the promise. If I go down there with you, I'm coming up out of there with you. I will go down into Egypt with you, but there I'm going to make of you a great nation. It's going to be 400 and something years later. But if I bring you down there, I promise you, if I bring you down, I'm going to bring you up out of there. And when I do, what I've promised you is going to come to pass. You're going to walk in 70 people, but when you walk out 400 years later, it's going to be a couple million that march out. If I bring you down, I'm going to bring you up. And I've come to talk to somebody tonight. The next step has you a little bit nervous because it almost feels like you're having to step down. Or, or maybe it's almost like, man, I'm not sure about this. You just obey the next step. And if God goes down there with you, I promise you, he's going to bring you up out of that place as well. If God... You just take the next ordered step regardless of if it makes sense to you, regardless of if you like how it looks, regardless of anybody else thinks you're crazy. You take the next step with God, and if God said, I'm going down there with you, I promise you I'll bring you up again. And I've come to talk to somebody tonight. Don't be afraid to take the next step even though... He says, I will go down with thee into Egypt. I'm going to go down into Egypt. But he said, I will also surely bring thee up again. I'm directing your steps. I'm sending you down into Egypt. And if I bring you down there, if, I, if you go down there, I'm going with you. And I'm going to bring you up again. This is a beautiful thing about following his steps. But if you go where he directs you, even when it doesn't make sense, he said, I'll bring you out of it. If I brought you to it, I'm going to bring you through it. I'll, I'll go down into Egypt with you, but I'm going to bring you up out of Egypt again. Don't worry. I'm going to bring you up out of there again. And you say, well, yeah, but I know the rest of the story, preacher. They get down into Egypt, and uh, it goes kind of good for a little while. But then it gets kind of rough. That's part of the steps. <laughs> we don't like that part. I want everything to just be a constant, just constantly going up, constantly climbing. But part of the process of them becoming a great nation was going down into Egypt. Part of them becoming what God was calling them to be was them becoming slaves in Egypt. The Bible says this, the more they afflicted them, the more they became what God was calling them to be. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. He said, I'm going to bring you in there. It's only going to be 70 of you. But when I bring you out, I'm going to bring you out a great nation. But part of the process was there were some steps that were uncomfortable. There were some times that weren't fun. There were some things that didn't feel good. There were some things that weren't right but the promise was, I'm going to bring you up out of there, and when I do, I'm going to bring you out of there a great nation. That, well, we don't like to think about a God that would allow us to go through some things that would try us and make us become what he's called. Is it possible that he would use the very thing that we think's working against us uh, to change us into what he's wanting us to be? He's using the very affliction that feels like is working against them uh, to make them stronger and a greater nation. Uh, it's ordered steps. God ordained it. God ordered it. Uh, and when they got sent down there, they ended up in slavery. But God said, I'm going to use this step right here that feels like uh, it's working against them, but I'm going to use this uh, for their good. I'm going to use this to help them become the very thing that I'm calling them to be, the very thing that I've ordained them to be. It's going to be that affliction, that heart. You, you know, let me hang out here for a minute. Quit feeling like you're special because you got an adversary or you got a problem. Well, you just don't understand. I got problems. Oh, good. I got some scripture for you. First Peter chapter 4. You got that one, Brother Alex? First Peter chapter Look at it. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. 
let me put that in modern English. Hey, don't think something crazy has happened to you when you have a problem or you're going through a fiery trial, like some strange or some foreign or some things happened to you that hadn't happened to other people. God allows things to happen in our life. It's part of the steps. Hard times come. Fiery trials come. Adversity comes. Everybody goes through different things. But quit feeling like we're the special one because I got the biggest need in the room or I got the biggest problem. No, no, he, this is what Peter's saying. Don't do that. Quit doing that. You're not special because you had a problem in your life. That, that part usually doesn't go over real good because we like to feel like our problems are kind of special and our adversity is kind of special. But Peter's saying, don't feel like you're some kind of superstar because you've had some kind of problem or you, something's wrong with you or God's forgotten about you. He says this, but rejoice. Boy, now that's a step right there. To go from complaining about it and thinking something strange to rejoicing about it. But he says, but rejoice in so much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed... You may be glad also with exceeding joy that there's going to come a moment where his glory, through that step you thought was going to destroy you, there's going to come a moment where you're going to look back and see, wait a second, I see his glory in that step right there, that that step was ordered by God, and now I see the glory in that step, that adversity, that hard thing, that trial that I was going through. Can I get a witness from anybody that's ever been through anything that felt like it was going to crush you and felt like it was going to destroy you, but now you get bowed on the other side of it and you look back and you say, wait a second, I survived it and I see now what God was doing. At the time, it was kind of hard to see it. At the time, it didn't make any sense, but now I look back and His glory is revealed through that thing. His glory is revealed through that hard time. His glory is revealed through that step that I didn't want to go through, that step I didn't want to take, but now I see. His glory. Okay. All right. I had to do that part about the, because they didn't want to go into slavery. They didn't want to have the hard times. We don't want the hard times, but the hard times come. And so can we fast forward just a little bit? One, one more step in this right here, and then I'll, I, th I think I'll be wrapping up. <coughs> So they get out of Egypt. The Lord leads them out of Egypt. They have the deliverance across the Red Sea, all that kind of stuff, right? So they get over there. And so now God is talking to Moses, and he's given instruction about when they go to possess the promised land. Now, that's what I'm talking about, possessing the promised land. I want to possess the promised land. I want to possess my promises. And you know what I want? I want God, when he gives me my promise, I want every bit of it right then. Don't you? Oh, yeah, some of you. Don't know whether to shake your head or not. Tell the truth. I want it all right now, Lord. Oh, man. Lord, I want every financial blessing you're ever going to send my way right now. <laughs> I, I, I want my help. I want it all. I want everything right now. God says, I'm going to bring you into the promised land. I'm going to take you to the promised land. And he says this in verse 29. Listen at these reassuring words. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year. Wait a second. Now, this is God. That's, that's what he said. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year. Well, now I'm going into my promised land. I want to take it over in a year. And the Lord said, I'm going to go ahead and tell you up front. I'm not going to give it to you in one year. Is that what it says? Did you know that was in your Bible? I will not drive them out from before thee in one year. But he said there's a reason. Lest the lamb become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. Verse 30. Look at what he says in verse 30. By little and little. One step 
after the next step. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. He said, I'm going to drive them out, and when you grow to obtain that and you grow to possess that and you're outgrowing that one, then we're going to drive the next one out. You're going to take that one over. Then you're going to grow there. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. I know we're ready to possess the next promise and the next place and all that, but could it be that God's letting us grow in this place right now, getting us ready for the next place so that, does that make some sense that, that God would allow me to possess my promise little by little? I want to possess my promise. I want to possess it the way God wants me to possess it. And if he wants me to take a little step here and have some progress and grow, And so, let me, let me, Brother AJ, I'm, I'm done. If, somebody, if you want to come play or whoever's playing, come play something. So, let me, let, me, let me boil it down back to exactly where we started. He said to the children of Israel, I'm going to drive them out little by little. And as you grow, we'll drive out the next town. We'll take over the next city. And then as you grow and as you multiply, we'll drive out the next one and we'll take that over. Does that make sense? And as you grow older, and the same thing is true with your walk with God, that it's not gigantic leap after gigantic leap. Don't get frustrated with little step after little step after little step. Now, I know that doesn't preach as good as telling you you can just take gigantic leap after gigantic leap after gigantic leap, but learning that it's one step after the next step, that it's little step after the next little step will help you a little bit in understanding why sometimes it feels like things are taking a little while. Because oftentimes we look at the finished product of somebody and say, man, I want to I wanna be like the Apostle Paul. There's a lot of little steps in there for the Apostle Paul. You look at somebody like Bishop and you say, well, I want to be like Bishop. There's a lot of little steps, right, Bishop? Yeah. Some of these saints have been doing this a long time, and, and you've been in this thing for a year, and you're getting frustrated because you're not like so-and-so, and, man, I want to be like this. You just keep taking one little step after the next little step and trust that your steps are ordered of the Lord. It's little step after little step after little step. Quit getting frustrated with yourself. Quit getting frustrated with God. You just keep taking one little step after the next little step, and before long you'll realize I'm possessing my promised land. It may not be happening the way I thought it was going to happen when I started, but I'm taking this now, and when I grow here, I'm going to go to the next thing and I'm going to possess this place. And when I possess that, then I'm going to step to the next place. Woo. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. I know we're kind of teaching a little bit different and all that, but I, I feel like I've been sent to talk to some people. You're frustrated because it hadn't happened overnight because it didn't happen in a year, it didn't happen in a two years, and it seems like it's taking longer. You just keep taking those ordered steps. You keep following him. Because if he spoke it, friend, it's coming to pass. If you'll just keep taking those steps, just keep taking the small steps. Just, hey, when there's a moment to take a big step, take it. When he says, hey, now, let me tell you, he can turn some things in a moment. He can turn them quickly. He can do it. Y'all know that part. I, I can preach that. We've preached that. We all know that. But a lot of times we forget about the little steps that happen between the big moments. And, and it's just that little by little. And as I grow and as I become what he's calling me to be, he says, okay, Aaron, now it's time. Let's go possess this over here. Let's go. And what seemed like it was locked up, all of a sudden it opens up. And now I walk over there, and I walk into that, and I possess that. And then I grow there, and he says, okay, Aaron, that's good. But now let's go on. Let's, let's go possess this over here. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. I, I, I know it's kind of gentle. I know it's kind of sweet. But, but don't, don't get frustrated with God because it all hadn't happened just when you thought it was going to happen or as quickly as you want it to happen. That when he told him you're going to possess the promised land, he said you're going to do it. By little and little. And you just keep following me, and it'll be one possession. You'll take that one, and then we'll have the next one, and we'll have the next one, and we'll have the next one. And before long, you'll possess it all. But you got to keep trusting me little by little. Little step after little step. 
on a Wednesday night, trust me. Wednesday night Bible study. I, I know there's a lot of things that, uh, you can stand up, that'll make me hurry. <laughs> I, know, I know there's a lot of things that you're just kind of like, man, it just kind of seems like I go to church, I pray, I go to church, I pray, I go to church, I pray. And, and we're waiting for some gigantic blessing bomb to go off. Not realizing that every little step, every service, every prayer meeting, every time of prayer is just those ordered steps. And it doesn't feel like you've gone very far, but when you look back from where you started, you realize, wait a second, all those little steps have added up to me getting all the way here. And that if I'll just keep following him and keep hearing him and keep obeying him, that I'm going to possess my promise little by little by little. It, it, this is why you can't say, oh, it's just one church service, or oh, it's just midweek, or oh, it's just Sunday night, or oh, it's just, you don't understand. It's little by little. It's those things that seem insignificant to everybody else that you say, no, 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 this is me possessing my promise. This is me getting what God has promised me. This is me walking into what God has promised me. Nothing's insignificant with God. Would you just lift your hands to the Lord right now? We're about to come pray, but just talk to the Lord just for a second where you're at. The Holy Ghost is in this place right now. Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. My steps are ordered, Jesus. I want us to come tonight. I want us to come pray. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Like I said earlier, it's a little bit different. But the Holy Ghost is in this place. And I want us to come, and I want us to come thanking Him for ordering our steps. That every step in the process is ordered of Him. That God is ordering. Lord, I, maybe some of us, might, we might need to repent about getting frustrated about it not happening when we wanted it to happen or how we wanted it to happen. But Lord, I'm just going to keep trusting You with the next step. That I'm going to possess my promise by little and by little. Lord, if you want me to possess it one small step at a time, that's fine with me. I just want to possess my promise. Lord, if you just want it to be one step after the next step, that's fine with me. I'll just grow. Lord, I trust you. I trust that you.